about it and how you ought to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? You know, because God doesn't, isn't a God that leaves us without answers. Right. You know, sure. because the thing is, is he has the answer to everything. Why? Because he knows everything. Mm -hmm. And I think some, uh, one thing that um, escaped people is the fact that God created where we sit. He created True. everything. True. See, and when I look at it in that regard, he created everything. And that makes it easy for me to believe every command. See, this is God's creation, not nobody else's. It is his creation. And in his creation, he gets to do whatever he wants to do. And he gets to say whatever he wants to say. And he gets to command everything he wants to command. See, because the thing is, is that, you know, he created the earth, but he created the earth, you know, with him being God over the earth. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that if he created the earth and he is God over his own creation, what right do I have to try to tell him how to run his creation? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you don't have that right. I don't have that right. Nobody has that right. Mm -hmm. See, but you got everybody, you know, a whole bunch of these clowns standing up in line, you know, wanting to tell God how his creation ought to be, ought, ought to have been created. You know, I mean, you look at, you know, the, you know, this whole thing with the gender stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're literally telling God, you know, you don't know what you were doing, man. You screwed up. Look, come on now. Because what did they tell these kids? Well, you know, when they, uh, uh, when you were born, they made a mistake. You know, they made a mistake. So they're saying, what, God made a mistake? Mm. God told you from the very beginning, you know, what the creation was going to be in regard right. to gender, True. male and female. Yep. That's what God said, see? And, you know, and, and, and if people who claim to be saved would just look at God's word, read God's word, and accept it for what he said, you wouldn't be walking around here scratching your head trying to figure stuff out. Stuff that you don't understand because of your relationship with him and your understanding of who he is, you know, what does he say? Wait on the Lord. Yep. What does yep. he say? Have patience. Let patience yep. have its perfect work and stuff. And when you look at scripture, there were times when people prayed, they got answers like that. There were times when people prayed, they had to wait. Mm -hmm. Had to wait for years. You know, Daniel waited 21 days, you know. People that prayed for me, you know, when I was playing minor league ball in, in Tidewater, Virginia, they prayed two years before I got saved, you know, and think about it. I mean, you know, the thing about it is that everything in your life as a believer, if you are truly a believer, it is all in the hands of God. It's true. It's in his hands, see? And if it's in his hands, what am I trying to do by slapping God's hand away saying, no, I don't want to do that. See, you know, I mean, rebellion, um, disobedience, you know, are two of the, the, the major problems in the church today. That's true. The two things that, that, that they, they, they don't want to obey what God said, you know, and, uh, and they rebel against it when God says, look, you're going to have to do it. I don't want to do And they start stomping their feet and throwing temper tantrums and all of this stuff, you know. And God says, look, I ain't got time for this. He walks off, you know. So the thing is, is that when, when if we allow our lives to be put in the hands of God, we don't even have a right. If we truly say that we belong to him, right. we don't have a right to tell him how we're going to do it, see. Because the thing is, is that you have to, you have the opportunity to live your life however you wanted to live it and stuff, see? And once you found out what the creator, what God had to say about your life, now you realize you've been living it the wrong way. You've been living it opposite to God and you've been living it in rebellion to God, see? True. Because the thing is, is that I was thinking about this this morning. Um, God never intended for sin to enter into heaven. Never intended for it, see? Never intended. When you look at the life of Adam and Eve prior to, you know, when they were walking with God and stuff, you know, 
they had no issues because they were walking in total perfection because God created them in his image, right. a perfect image perfect. and stuff, yeah. you know? And so the moment that they disobeyed God, everything changed. Their behavior changed. They became fearful. They were no longer the person that they were created, see? And God put it in their hands to be able to maintain that relationship. True. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't press them on it. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't threaten them or nothing like that. He told them, look, this is what's going to happen Indeed. if you fail to do what I commanded you to do. He says, if you eat of that tree, you know, the fruit of that tree, he said, you're going to surely die. Yep. He said, there's no question you're going to die. Mm -hmm. See? And not only that, you know, I believe in the relationship they had with God because God said that the Bible said that Adam and God walked through the uh, garden in the cool of the day. Yep. What did they be doing? Just kind of looking at each other, sizing each other up. They were fellowshipping. Fellowship. They were talking and stuff. Why? Adam was God's son. True. He was God's son right. and stuff. And so, you know, my daddy ain't never just kind of looked me up and down without saying something. If I didn't hop to it when he told me to do something, I was in trouble, right. you know? And how did I know I was in trouble? From experience. <laughs> From experience, you know you're in trouble when you disobey, you know, when I disobey, when I would disobey my father. And the same thing happened with Adam and Eve and stuff. They disobeyed their father and stuff. The one who created them in his image, in his likeness. And yet they said, we don't want to be like that, you know? And the thing is, is that it's, it's kind of ironic about the human nature, you know, you know, because the thing is, is that, you know, we didn't have the opportunity at birth to be created perfect, like True. Adam and Eve. We didn't have that because True. they had already uh, 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 doped up the seed, so to speak, mm -hmm. and stuff, by, by sinning mm -hmm. and stuff and mm -hmm. rebelling against God. And so, but it also shows you that God didn't give up on his creation, you know, and I assure you, God already had a plan. Yeah. You know, he come up, the Bible said he's all knowing, he's all seeing. So ain't nothing catching God on by surprise, right. nothing and stuff. And so, and so when he tells us, if you repent of your sin and he says, then I will forgive you of your sin. And then you shall become my sons and my daughters and I will put my spirit in you and my spirit will cause you to do right. He will also, Amen. according to the 14th chapter of John, he will lead you, he will teach you, and he will guide you into all truth. Amen. All truth. So that goes back to what I said earlier. There is nothing that God won't give you that you need. See, because he promised the needs now. He said, I will supply all your need. See? Most people probably put that and try to put that in context of material right. things, stuff, yep. money, fame, all of that. Uh uh. That is the last thing on God's mind because the thing is, is that we have to understand God is a spirit. That's right. See? Mm -hmm. So God is thinking from a spiritual perspective. That's right. He ain't thinking from a flesh perspective. That's, right. That's why these clowns get on there talking about, well, you know, God is just going to bless you with a whole bunch of money today. You are a big fool. And the people that listen to you are a big fool. And you'd be surprised at the number of people that if you look down in the comment, amen, and they got all their little uh, uh, gifts and stuff, goody, 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 and all of that, you know, because they think they're going to get some money, see? I'm telling you something. When God speaks about anything, I can assure you, Ken, it's spirit yeah. first. Yep. It's all about the spirit first, see? Yep. Because if you walk right in the right spirit, in the spirit of God, all this fleshy stuff will work itself out because now, you know, you are looking at things through the eyes of God because if you are resting in the spirit and resting in God rather and trusting in the spirit of God, the spirit of God is the spirit of truth. Amen. It's what Jesus said. Amen. And he's going to lead you into all, all truth, truth and stuff. See, Amen. when these folks go around and they want to talk, they'll talk to a doggone onion if he got eyes, you know, if they can get an answer from him. You know, that they want to hear and stuff, you know, I mean, and that's the reason a lot of people go to God. They go to God, but they go to God expecting a certain outcome that they want. See, 
not what God wants. See, the Bible says that we are to do the will of the Father. Amen. We are to live as Jesus lived and walk and, and walk as He walked, and we are to want the things that God wants. Amen. See, if His Spirit is in us, and if we're listening to the Spirit, the Spirit is going to lead and teach us to please God. So, if we're going to be pleasing God, we're going to be doing those things that God wants us to do. Amen. See? And we're going to know what those wants are because if we love them, we're going to fellowship with them and we're going to have time, spend time with them to find out exactly, Father, what is your will for my life today? You know, and that's what I pray that every day. I don't pray for God, what's your will for me down the road? What's your will for me a week later, a month later? I don't pray like that. You know, the Bible says today is sufficient in itself. And because God says tomorrow ain't promised to nobody, so I better be trying to do all Amen. that I can do for God today. Amen. See, I want to do his will Amen. today. All of it, not some of it. I want to do all of God's will today, you know. And when I, when I, if I'm sincere, you know, when I say that, then my day is going to be spent thinking on the things of God. Amen. See, thinking on the things of God, you know, and stuff. And then listening and hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me. See, because what did Jesus say? Him who has ears to hear, mm -hmm. let him hear what the Spirit mm -hmm. is saying. Right. See, if you hear with your flesh heart, your flesh mind or whatever, your answer is going to be a flesh answer. True. And if it's a flesh answer, ain't nothing mm -hmm. about it can please God. That's right. Nothing about it to please God. Because we find in the fourth chapter of John that it says, God is a Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must, must, M-U-S-T, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, and as many as you can get behind that, see? Because that is the only way it's going to happen, see? Must worship him in spirit and in truth, see? Truth. You can't worship him in spirit if his spirit doesn't live in you. You can't worship truth. him in spirit if, first of all, even before the spiritual relationship and the receiving of God's spirit, if you don't repent of your sin, you ain't going to be able to do nothing for God anyway. That's true. See, that's, true. that's the first step, you know, in being able to establish and to have a relationship with the Father and with Christ because of the fact that if you are not born again, you are not a child of God. See, true. because the child of God and, and Jesus let us all know <clears throat> in the 8th chapter that the devil got kids too. Oh, yeah. He's got babies running around here too yeah. and all of that. But their motive and their motivation are totally different than those of a child of God. Our motivation should be, the first motivation should be to love God. True. To love God. The Bible says that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. See? So the thing is, is that everything about our life should be centered in pleasing God. And that's and then that and then the head of that center is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. See? Amen. And the thing is, is that we ought to be wanting to do the things of God. <clears throat> and because of the relationship with God. But people today do not think that it's important for them to obey what God says. And, and I think when I talk about God's cre God creating everything, and he reminds us in his word that he did create everything. Right. He told you even how he, do it in, how he did it rather in Genesis. See? Yep. He said, you know, and what did God do? He spoke everything yep. into existence. Yep. Right. And that shows you right there the power of God's word. See? And when a person is truly born again and walking in the anointing of God and, or, or the spirit of God and stuff, their words become just as powerful because yeah. when you speak God's words, they don't belong to you. They are the words that God has given you to speak. Amen. And his anointing Amen. is on those words. And that's why those words go forth and they accomplish what God sent them to do. Ain't Amen. that what the Bible says? Yeah. The word of God. He will, his word will go for it and it will accomplish that which he sent to do. That's see, true. he sent his word in the person of Jesus and the whole purpose in that for you to repent of your sin and get back in the right relationship with God. But that can only happen through repentance Amen. and through a salvation through the son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only way that's going to happen. Amen. See, that's the Amen. only way that's going to happen. See, it's not going to happen any other way. 
You have to understand that if it does not get settled in your heart that God is the only person that matters in the life of the saved and the unsaved. Amen. Because if you don't obey him as the unsaved, you're not inheriting the kingdom of God. See? Right. And true. see, and this is the thing about what I had been thinking about, you know, and God just kind of poured it, poured it on me, you know, and just ministered it to me for the last couple of days. And that is the fact that Everybody who thinks they're going to hell ain't going. They're not going to go. Unbelievers, waverers, doubters, double-minded people, yep. according to the first chapter of James, you know, any of those people, they will not expect. He said, don't expect to receive anything from God. Right. See, That's true. don't expect to receive anything from God. Only those who are faithful and obedient are the ones who are going to be blessed with eternity, with the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. Amen. That's Amen. the only way that's going to happen. The only way that that's going to happen. Amen. That, you know, everybody ain't going to heaven. Mm -hmm. No, nope, everybody's not going to be accepted by God. The thing is, is that if you expect yourself to be accepted by God, then you better be doing the will of God. Right. Jesus said, only Amen. them who do the will of my Father will inherit the kingdom of, of God. Let's turn over to uh, Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. See, it's all about the relationship with God, and, and even more so than that, it's all about being obedient to God. Amen. See, you know, what settled things so much and made uh, for me and made things so much easier for me, you know, was the fact that I did say Matthew 7, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, was, you know, and I share this with my wife all the time, you know, because we talk about the Bible quite often. You know, and the thing that, 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 that I shared with her was, you know, what made my life so much easier in, in just trusting God and, and really understanding God was God showed me. He said, look, son, when I show it to you in my word, he said, that settles everything. It's true. He said, my word is truth. Yeah. My word is absolute. That's and right. there is nothing like it. And that can compare to it whatsoever. So he says, when you hear it, uh, or see it, read it, or see it rather in my word, he says, then that's settled it. That's just settled it, see? Yep. And he says, you once you accept that, then there is nothing else to concern yourself about with that particular thing, see? And see, the thing about what it settled me, settled it for me in regard to God's word is it's true. True. And right. God wrote it, yep. see? He, he wrote it by me. He inspired me to write it, but he wrote it. They wrote his words and stuff. Right. And if God is true and he cannot lie and it's impossible for him to lie, when I read it in this book and when I understand what God is trying to reveal to me or whatever, it is settled for this old boy. Right. I'm not looking for no, no answers anywhere else, see? Because everything in regard to our lives as believers it ain't found anywhere else but in the God's word. Right, See, God yeah. shows us through his word how we ought to live, what we ought to do, what we ought to say, who we ought to fellowship with, what we ought to be aware of or warned about. He shows us and tells us all of that in his word. See, Amen. that's why there's no other book like the word of God. Amen. No other book like Amen. the word of God. See, true. Because in God's book, in God's word, there is forgiveness, there is healing, there is deliverance, there is instruction and guidance by the spirit of God. You know, through his word, as we read it, as we meditate on it, and as we fellowship in it, then God is going to grow us into becoming the son and the daughters that he created us to be. Amen. See, Amen. that's what he's going to do. True. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. See. That's why, I mean, I love God so much Amen. and I'm just so thankful Amen. that he has put it in my heart that as long as I trust him, I don't have to worry about trying to trust a man or trust this or trust that, see? Because the Bible tells me, as I shared yesterday, we are complete in Jesus. Amen. Every believer is complete in Jesus. That's what it says in, in, uh, in the second chapter you know, uh, of Colossians. And if you don't believe me, we'll go over there and read it in a minute. I'm going to read this first. In Matthew chapter 7, this, and this is Jesus talking. 
You know, he's talking. And when you read in the very beginning of chapter 7, you'll see where Jesus starts, you know, telling you about the fruits of people and, and so on and so forth. And, and, and then he talks to you about, you know, warning you about false prophets and preachers and stuff. You know, so let's just start from the first, uh, let's see, not from the first verse, from about verse uh, 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophet. If we're going to be doing to them what we want done to us, we want to be, we want to be uh, associated with people that fellowship in the things of God. Sure. We want to live a life that's a witness and a testimony to other people as to who Jesus truly is. And so if we want that from other people, then when people start the, the googly God, the gibberish and all that, we ain't got time for that. Mm. See, we don't have time for that because that is not really, you know, what I want somebody to be trying to do to me or impress upon me. See, I want to know the truth because yeah. the truth is what's going to set me free. See, yeah. and that's the kind of life we ought to be living because we want to present the life of Jesus to other people because there's no better life than living a life that is that is uh, uh, lived to the glory of God. Amen. See, so we want people to see who we truly are in Christ. So in other words, we surrender our will to Jesus and let him lead us and teach us and guide us and let him be our witness and our testimony by how we live, see, by what we say, by what we do, because we want that for everybody else. Amen. See, that's what I want to be able to do in the life of somebody else. Verse 13. Enter you in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. See, Jesus said a whole bunch of folks going that way. Oh, See, God. why? Because it's the easy way. Yep. It is the easy way that, that, that line ups with the way they've been living. Yep. See, with their flesh. See, so the, the broad way, oh man, I got all kind of smorgasbord, all kind of tables I can pick from or whatever and stuff. And it's all what I want. Yep. All what I want, not what I need. See, you know, all what you want is going to be found out there in that broad way uh, if you're living according to the flesh. Then all what you're going to need is going to be found in a very confined, narrow, straight path. See? Yep. Where you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to doubt. You don't have to scratch your head and try to figure out how you're supposed to live, what you're supposed to say, what you're supposed to do, how you are to honor God. God is going to reveal all of that to you because it's encompassed in that straight and the narrow way that we're going to read here in a second. Because straight is the gate in verse 14, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets. But let me go back to 14 for a second because I don't ever want to read that without pointing this particular thing out as I always do. The Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. But the last part of that verse is what gets a lot of people, I believe. Mm -hmm. And few there be that find it. Find it. Yep. A lot of people probably stop right there. Mm -hmm. You know, right before that last little... Uh, 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 a partial uh, sentence or phrase, and few shall and few there be that find it, that find it. See, that find it, and you know those people who find it are the ones who know what they're looking for. Amen. See, they're not like these Jews we're gonna talk about in a minute, wandering around in the wilderness and stuff. You know, you know, bumping the head on this tree, bumping the head on that tree, tripping over that rock, tripping over that rock, or whatever. You know, when you are a child of God. And you walk along in that straight and narrow, there ain't no obstacles. Right. No obstacles, see? Because right. what? Jesus already cleared the way. Yep. By the life he lived on the right. earth, tempted in every way such as we are, but yet without sin, see? So that's why this narrow, this, the, 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 uh, the way is straight and narrow and that there are no obstacles in the way because through the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, the path was made clear as to what you can expect and what you can look forward to. Why? Because God's revealing everything to you. Amen. See, he ain't hiding nothing from you. He ain't hiding nothing from anybody. When people say, oh, well, I'm a born again person. Or I'm a, and you know that old word they like, a Christian word. I hate that word. I'm a Christian. Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, well, I, I feel so sorry for you. You know, I feel sorry for you. See, 
Because Jesus said, be born again. That's right. That's what he said. True. You must be That's born true. again. So, and so Jesus goes on to say, you know, in verse 15, now think back to what we just read and think of what he's saying right now. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their what? Fruits. Their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. See? So Jesus is analyzing us in uh, uh, using the analogy of people being fruit. Right, right. And he's talking about two kinds of fruit. And we got two kinds of fruit on the earth in reality. It's true. You do have rotten fruit. Yep. And a rotten fruit, you put a rotten apple can in a barrel of good apples and just leave it yep. over time, yeah. those apples, all those apples are going to be rotten. Yep. See? That's why when you got people trying to get into, trying to worm their way into your life that are bad seeds and stuff, that's why you either kick them out of your life or you run from them. That's right. See, that's what Jesus said you do. You run from them and stuff. You don't waste your time with that because you waste your time, you know, with a rotten person, you're going to eventually become rotten. Maybe not totally like them, but the Bible said a little leaven leavens a whole Amen. month. That's so right. it don't take but a little bit of that's sin. It. See? That's it. Don't take but a little bit of sin to mess you up. See? That's, that's why God gives you the authority and the power through Christ to guard your heart against all of that stuff and to make the right choices as to who you're going to fellowship with and who you're going to allow into your life. Totally up to you. See? But God tells you, you know, gives you the examples, you know, distinct examples of who is of him and who is not. That's right. Let's continue. Beware false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are revening wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. That's that rotten piece of fruit there. Mm -hmm. A good tree cannot, cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. See, mm -hmm. cast into the fire. It's like I said very early on. Unsaved people are not going to inherit the kingdom no, of God. True. They're not going to heaven, see? They're not, see? Jesus said, look, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. And why is that? When we're walking in the spirit of God, it's the, we ain't going to be bearing no bad fruit. That's right. There's nothing bad about Jesus or rotten about God or Christ, period. See? So we're going to be walking in the likeness of of God and of Christ. Why? That's what the Holy Spirit is going to lead us to do. Right. See, yeah. that's what he's going to lead us to do. So we're not going to be bearing bad fruit or rotten fruit, you know, as a child of God. If we're faithful and obedient, see, we're not going to be doing that. So Jesus uh, continues to speak. He says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Why? They don't have the spirit of God in them. That's right. They don't have the spirit of God in them. That makes a difference. See, you know, if you don't understand anything else, you know, the spirit is what makes the difference. If you have the spirit of God in you, he's going to lead, teach, and guide you in the right way. If you're a child of the devil and the spirit of the devil is living in you or leading you or guiding you or whatever, ain't nothing good about your life. That's right. Nothing whatsoever. There ain't no truth about you according to what Jesus said in John 8, 44. He says, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, you will do. See? You will do. You know, and we were, as me and Ken was talking about earlier, you know, he said, you know, he said, have you ever seen it this bad? You know, have you ever seen it? No, I ain't never seen it this bad. In regard to evil, I mean, you know, it's like people getting killed every day is like drinking water now. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's, it's so common. And the thing about it, there's no outrage about it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a common yep. thing. Yep. You know, the Bible says that, you know, in the last days that good will become evil and evil will become good and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that, yep. see? And, and we'll look at that in a little bit. You know, but uh, 
The reason that there is so much evil is because there is no love for God. It's true. There's and even in God's claim, in, in quote God's own house, you know, there's no fear of God. Right. There is no fear of God. See, there is nothing, you know, in you that would lead you and drive you, you know, to live the kind of life that is pleasing to God. And not only that, that is a Christ-like representative to others if the Spirit of God ain't in you. Because that's what makes the difference. My life didn't change until I repented. And I allowed Jesus to be in control, allowed him to be Lord and Savior of my life. That's when everything changed, see? And so when everything changed, now it's like the blind man in the ninth chapter. He says, once I was blind, he said, but now I see. Amen. see? Now I see. And if you see, you know, through the eyes of God, and then if you accept what you're hearing and reading in his word and stuff, you can't help to do but change. That's you right. can't help Amen. to do anything rather but change. Amen. And you know why? When you love God, you want to change. Amen. You want to change. You want to please That's God. True. See? And, and the thing is, is that, you know, the church can't claim that it is the house of God. What a big fat lie that is. See? You know, the church is probably one of the worst witnesses yep. for unsaved people that you ever want to see. Yep. And why, why do you say that, preacher? Because they allow anything in church now. Yep. And all they do is just attach a name to it. It doesn't matter whether God approves of it or whether it's in Scripture or not. You know, the people like it, so that's what we're going to do, Ken. Mm -hmm. The people yep. like it, so that's what we're going to do. And so instead of preaching the truth, preaching repentance, you know, that was the first message that any preacher ought to be preaching if he takes over the church. Right. It's to repent and believe the gospel. Why? Because that's what Jesus did. Yep. See? Jesus knows there's no hope for anybody if they don't repent of their sins. Right. It's not about being a good person, so to speak. None are good. No, not one. That's right. Jesus said only the Father is good. Oh, See? Yep. So who you gonna believe? Jesus or the devil? Because when you believe in a liar. You know, look in the flesh, ain't nothing but a child of the devil. Yep. He represents a child of the devil. Whatever comes out of somebody's mouth and however they're living their lives, that is a testimony as to who they're serving. Mm. See, that's the testimony mm. as to who they're serving. See, what did Jesus just say? A good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Right. A bad tree cannot bear good fruit. See, what does the Bible tell us? Walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of your flesh. See, so living as Jesus lived is not walking in the flesh, period. It's not walking in the flesh, period. It's walking like the, like the Lord walks, see? And, and God tells us, as I've read in chapter 14 of John, the spirit of God will lead you, teach you, and guide you into all truth. So in verse uh, 19, chapter 7 of Matthew, it says, every tree, every tree, none omitted, Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, every tree that is disobeying God is cut down and cast into the fire. Now we associate fire after death in being hell. See, in being hell. Jesus said they're cast into hell and they're burned up. It's basically what he's saying. Wherefore by their fruit you shall know them. Here's a kicker right now because you've got people who think because of their church attendance that they're going to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. You've got people who think because I live, I'm living a good life, you know, without a repentant heart that they are going to go to heaven. I do, I make provisions for my, my family. I provide for my family. I love my wife. I love my husband. But the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Ain't nothing in that said about if you treat your wife good, then that's good enough for God. And you're going to make it in heaven. If you do the right thing by your family, by making provision for them, all physical provision for them, then you say, well, I'm going to make it into heaven. Well, I'm a good person because I treat everybody nice and, you know, and I try to do the right thing or whatever. Let me tell you something. If you were truly born again, you would do the right thing. Right. It wouldn't That's be true. about trying to do the right thing. See, yeah. you do stuff unsaved as an unsaved individual, hoping, you know, that something going to work out and stuff. Mm. Hoping that I'm going to make it to heaven and stuff. 
You're not making it to heaven and you're not going to even receive the blessings of God while you're on this earth if you're disobedient and rebellious against the That's things true. of God. Amen. You have no promise of receiving anything from God if you walk that way. Amen. Nothing whatsoever. That's true. Nothing. So Jesus said in verse 21, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Those are the only people going to make it into heaven. That's true. Those are the people, you know, where Jesus says that, that they do the will of my Father. See, that's the most important thing that Jesus says is that doing the will of the Father. And you know, and why does he say that? Why does he say that? While he was on the earth, everything he did was what the Father told him to do and what the Father told him to say. So he was doing the Father's will. Why? Everything he said, everything he did, he came from God. See? Amen. <clears throat> and that's why he said, I did all the will of the Father. It stopped. But guess what? We're held to the same standard. Yep. Whether y'all want to believe it or not, yep. we're held to the same standard, whether we believe it or not. It stopped. So, so the thing is, is that the Bible says that if Jesus is our example, if Jesus is our example, then that's the person that we need to be following. That's right. We need to be following him. So, so Jesus goes on to say, many, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? He said, that's what you're going to say to me. That's, your, that's what you're going to question me about. Did we do mighty works? Did we do this? Did we do that? See, and Jesus already was sizing them up as they were talking, trying to figure out who they were. Because what did he say? I never knew you. I never knew you. Even though you did all of these good things in your eyes, you know, they were as if you had done none of them because I don't know you and I didn't even see you. He said, because, you know, I know my sheep and they know me. That's right. I know that they know me by name. I know them by name and stuff. He said, but I don't know you. Depart from me is what he said. And then when I profess in verse 23 unto them, I never knew you depart from me, you that worketh iniquity. See, the thing Jesus is saying is there are going to be people that are going to be doing good works, good things, you know, and they're going to attribute that, you know, to their relationship with God. But what nullifies everything, even the relationship and, and Jesus having any knowledge of who you are, he says, you practice lawlessness. Iniquity is lawlessness. Yep. He said, you work lawlessness. It's what he said. So he said, I don't know you because those that accepted me as Lord and Savior, they don't practice lawlessness. They don't right. work lawlessness. They do the Father's will. See, and when you go back up, it just, Jesus said, them who do my father's will. Right. Lawlessness is not the will of God. See, it's not the will of God. Mm. So Jesus said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whoso hear these things of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat up on that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and that rock being Jesus Christ Amen. the firm foundation on the Lord see because the Bible says he's been tempted tested and tried just as we are but yet without sin see and we know that as he walked on the earth you know when Jesus was in storms when Jesus was being persecuted and ridiculed or whatever he always came out the victor Amen. see because he knew who he was and stuff. And he knew the power and the authority that he had. And he knew who he was as the son of God. But 
as a man walking on the earth under the power and under the authority of the Father, he knew who he was. And Jesus is trying to get all of us as a, as the children of God to understand who we are in him. See, right. who we are in him. See, in my name, you shall cast out devils. In my name, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. See, you know, there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. What the Bible say, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. The Bible says no other name given among men whereby we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. Amen. See, see, our hope, our trust, our faith, you know, our desire and our love is for Jesus. Amen. See, it's for him. See, Amen. we can do nothing without Jesus. It's true. Jesus says you can do nothing without me. See. And the thing about it, I don't want to do nothing without him. That's true. Nothing whatsoever. I want everything in my life to be done according to his will. Amen. Good check on this. So, so the thing is, is that if we're going to be doing God's will, that means that we have to be in right relationship with him. That's what it means. We have to be in right relationship, you know, with him. You know, and when we hear Jesus talking about the uh, the stony and stuff, uh, 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 the rock brother, he's talking about Jesus. And then you go on to say, and everyone that hear these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat up on that house and it fell and great was the fall of that house. See, great was the fall. Why? Didn't have any stability. Why? Didn't have any foundation. Why? Jesus wasn't the foundation or the rock. The Bible says that, you know, there's no other foundation that we can build upon other than the foundation Amen. of Christ. See? So in other words, whatever Jesus has established, you know, in terms of being disciple unto him and becoming sons and daughters in his likeness, we're going to have to follow his example. It's true. Bottom line. We're going to have to follow his example. And, and it's a sad thing to say, though, you know, most people don't even know what that is. They don't even know what the example of Jesus really is, see, because all they live by is what they were told yep. by somebody. See, the Bible tells us to search the scripture. The Bible tells us to study to show ourselves approved unto God, rightly dividing the word. Why? Because, you know, people will read the same word that you read. But yet they're interpreted in a different way. Yep. That's why you know you need to know what the right interpretation is. You know, the Holy Spirit will show you that. That's right. And will reveal that to you and stuff. This guy didn't have any firm foundation because his foundation wasn't in Christ. You know, and that's why when all the trials and the tests and the persecution and the tribulation come, you know, as it talks about, you know, um, you know, when the sower sows the word in that particular scripture. You know, when the sower, you know, sows the word, you're going to find people that are going to interpret the word in so many different ways. See, you know, and when the challenges come for the word's sake, not because they know the word and the word has become who they are. It's because they know of the word and they don't know how to stand on the word because they only know that they have that what I call that surface knowledge. You know, mm -hmm. to where as Jesus talks, talks about, you know, having a thirst for the water of the word, having a thirst and a hunger for the word of God and stuff. And you cannot and will not develop that unless you have the right relationship, you know, with the Lord. You know, the thing is, is that there are people who think that they're going to go to heaven, but they're not. You know, they're not going to go to heaven and stuff. And the thing about it is they try to put this... Um, identity on God, you know, that God is such a kind person, you know, that if I do good things, no, 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 no. Mm. God says, believe every word that I've told right. you. That's believe true. every word that proceeds forth out the mouth of God, not just some of it and stuff. And when you believe the whole word of God, then you will have a full understanding of who God is and what his expectations are for those who call upon his name and stuff. Now, the thing is that, that, you know, people don't expect to be punished for their sin. They don't. You know, a lot of people do not expect to be punished for their sin. 
And why is that? Because they have defined sin for themselves. See, they don't view sin the way God does. See, immediately when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they lost fellowship with God. Yep. Why? Because before that, they had a relationship, a loving, kind relationship, you know, with God, because the Bible didn't speak of anything prior to that, you know, that they had an issue with and stuff. But the moment that they disobeyed God, what happened? They became different people. Indeed. They were different people mm -hmm. and stuff. Just as, you know, when we come to the Lord in sincerity and in truth and stuff and surrender our lives to the Lord, you know, we change, you know, for the good. We change, you know, in the likeness of Jesus and we strive to become just like him, you know, by, by following him and obeying God's word. Same principle applied to Adam and Eve. You know, once they walked away from God, everything changed. So everything changed. In their whole life, everything changed. Yeah. They never received, you know, the true blessings of God, you know, that they could have received. They could have lived a life that was totally, completely and uh, surrendered unto God, see? Because, I mean, in my limited understanding, I guess, of, of having fellowship with God, there's nothing when I'm in fellowship with God makes me think about rebelling against him or disobeying him and stuff. Nothing. You know, there is nothing about, you know, uh, about my life, you know, that causes me want to sin against God. Nothing whatsoever. But you will find, though, that there are people, you know, that God destroyed yep. because of their sin. You know, first one that comes to mind is Sodom and Gomorrah and stuff, you know. And so the thing is, is that, is that when that happened, it just shows you how much God hates sin. Mm -hmm. And and two, really, it also shows you the extent that God or the grace that God will give people to repent, yep. you know. And, and I mean, because, I mean, you, you like we were talking about earlier, you know, with all this evil going on now, you know, if God wanted to, he could have just wiped everybody out. Mm -hmm. yep. All evil people, he could just wipe them out, see? But there's, you know, but, you know, God's hope is probably a lot different from my hope, see? <laughs> because, you know, I've said many times, man, if I was God, they'd be crispy critters by now. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not the way God, that's not the way God operates and stuff, you know. And thank God, you know, I don't think that way anymore. You know, I mean, I, I want to have the same grace for people as God has for them. Right. But I do know that God has a limit, yeah. you know, and, 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 and so do we, you know, and so do I have a limit, you know, in, in terms of, you know, people saying they serve God, but they really don't, you know. So the thing is, is that... Uh, in Noah's day, the people got so evil, you know, that what did God do? He destroyed them all. Mm -hmm. He destroyed everybody and stuff. And, and Jesus spoke about that. Turn to chapter 17 of uh, Luke. Luke 17. 26, I think it is. I'm going to start up at verse 20, I think, so to get the proper context about what we're going to, what I'm going to say about this. In verse 20 it says, and when he was, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, and this is Jesus talking, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the disciples, The days will come when you shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. Trying to lead you in a different direction than what God is trying to lead you into. And he says, For as the lightning for as the lightning that lighteth, lighteneth out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must be suffering, but, but first must he suffer many things 
and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the, into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the days when the Son of Man is revealed. Mm -hmm. See, all this stuff is going to be coming to fruition. Why is so evil now? Because, you know, these are just the signs of the coming of the Lord. Right. Because in another scripture, Jesus says that these are signs. He says the time is not here, but these are the signs. See, because he said he told us in scripture, he says, you shall know the days and the times and the season. He said, you know, he said, but it ain't ready, it ain't ready yet to happen. Right. See, and so, and so the thing is, is that, um, uh, when Jesus says that, you know, that the, you shall know the times and the seasons is what he said, you know, and that is what he's talking about here, I believe. So if you go over to the sixth chapter of, uh, of Genesis, then we'll actually see, you know, what the Bible was saying that was going on in that day. Jesus just told us, but, and this is, be, and this is why God uh, wiped them all out. Now in verse uh, in verse 5 in chapter 6 in verse 6 is in chapter 6 rather than verse 5 he says that God saw and this is what Jesus was talking about in, in, in Luke 17 and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And this is the kind of evil that we're seeing today, when, especially from our government yeah. and stuff. You know, they're, the, they're like the head of uh, honcho of all of this evil that we're seeing taking place because people figure, well, you know, the most powerful organization in the world, you know, if they say it's okay, then it must be all right. Because you got people that have no problem doing evil and, and allowing their mind to be consumed with evil. See, because I've said this before, if you put, if you think on something long enough, eventually you're going to do it. And especially when you've got sure. other people encouraging you to do that thing that you're thinking about, because they're the ones that put the thought in your mind in the first place. See, because, you know, um, when they heard, you know, uh, what was being said about hating God. Now think about it. Now you know people had in the days of Noah for nobody to even mention the name of God. You know, think about how they had buried any inkling of who God was. Mm -hmm. See, because what did God just say uh, uh, in, in, in Genesis? God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every, every imagination of every Every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil all the time mm. or continually. Think about that. Yeah. Think about mm. the, the mentality or the attitude that develops in the heart of a person whose mind is continually stayed on evil. Mm -hmm. Think about that. The Bible just see, when you read the Bible, and I tell them in church all the time, when they read the Bible, read every word, every word. Yep. carefully, every word, see? Because that one word can spare you from walking around with your head in the clouds trying to figure out what that meant. And, and that one word, you know, opened up the whole door for you, wide open, see? Because when he says that, Every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It was so bad, God had repented, had to repent himself, as it will say in his next verse, that he had ever created man. 
and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. See, mm -hmm. at his heart, see. And then it says, and the Lord said, I will, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. God said, I'm so sorry that I did this. Wow. I'm sorry that I did. Now, let me tell you something. The Bible also says this about the father. God is no respect of persons. True. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. That's and true. I can assure you, God has had these same thoughts in our day many, many, many times. And he continues to have them today. Yep. I guarantee that. See? And so he said, I will destroy man. And I believe that people have, who have these evil individual intentions, you know, and that's all that they think about, how they can hurt somebody, how they can destroy somebody, how they can make life miserable for somebody, how they can gain some kind of an advantage for themselves by doing something to somebody. And if they get rid of that somebody, then that gives them an, an, uh, an advantage. Why do you think you read about people killing other people all because they had something that they wanted or that person even had a position that they wanted and they had them taken out? That happens. Yeah, do. That happens. You know why? Because if, if evil can be so strong and so powerful that it does not even want to mention the name of God or the name of Jesus and stuff, you know, think about how evil that is. Think about you don't want nothing good in your life because every good gift and every perfect gift comes from God. Sure. If you don't want none of that in your life, you don't want any of that. If you're this kind of person that, that God is talking about here in Genesis and stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't want that, see? And, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, if God is no respecter of person, I mean, if you're walking around here doing evil, you're in trouble with God, mm -hmm. see? You're in trouble with God. And so... He says, uh, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in, in, in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Hint, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. See, what saved, G what saved Noah from the same punishment of the whole world? His relationship with God. His relationship with God. God is going to, I don't care, come hell or high water. That's how come I don't worry about all this old stuff that's going on or whatever. See, God never told me to worry about what he told me was going to be happening today. See, this is what's happening. All the evil you want to see, it is happening today. It's true. God didn't tell me to worry about that. God said, this is a sign of and times and a season as to what is going to happen. I told you in, in, in Matthew 24 what was going to happen and stuff. See, and, and so the thing is, is that why are you worrying about this stuff? Why do you concern yourself with it? Now, we need to be praying. We need to be rebuking. We need to be binding. We need to be doing all the things that God told us to do when we are confronted with times and situations like this. See, Adam, I mean, Noah, what did Noah do? The Bible says that Noah walked with God and Noah was a friend of God. See, mm -hmm. So all of this stuff happening around him did not deter him from doing God's will. See, God told Noah to build an ark, something nobody ever did before, something that they didn't, nobody even knew what it was and stuff. So think about how, and I've said this many times, but think about the kook that they thought he was. Mm -hmm. See, number one, you know, he's the only somebody, you know, because in Peter it says that Noah was the only person that was preaching the gospel. Yep. See? He was a preacher, is what the Bible said. So he preaching to people while he's working on the ark and stuff, you know. And the thing about it is, if their thoughts and their intent were totally evil or whatever, you cannot tell me that there was time and time and time and time again that they wanted to take Noah out. But Noah was in the same situation that Jesus was. Noah had God's grace. Noah was in right relationship with God. And because of that, what? God protected him. Amen. They couldn't do nothing to Noah because God had him protected. See? Amen. That's why they couldn't do anything to him. 
You know, they couldn't do nothing to him. And he was talking about God. I assure you, he was talking about God and talking about, you know, uh, uh, God will heal you. And you better get ready because what, what my father is telling me, what God is telling me is that there's going to come a great flood. And God says, I'm going to take out everything and everybody. And the only people that are going to be left is one male and one female of every animal species and only my and only Noah's family. That's it. See, and you know how they were laughing at him? Yeah. <clears throat> they were laughing so much mm -hmm. that everybody was falling down on the ground, laughing and busting a gut about this crazy man talking about, look, this stupid thing. We don't even know. He don't even know what it is that he's building or whatever. He didn't have to know. Only thing he needed to know was God told him Amen. to do it. Amen. That's all that he needed to know. And that's all he was concerned to know, see, because... If Noah walked with God, you don't think God shared with him what was going on? Mm -hmm. See, because God don't let us allow it. There are some things that God doesn't reveal to us immediately, but then there are some things, you know, that God will let you know right along what's going on yep. and see and what's happening and stuff. See, and so, and so Noah, did, it didn't matter to Noah. Noah said, God, you know, he said, I'm going to do what you commanded me to do. See, and, and, and according to scripture, he did it all by himself. Yep. It took him some hundreds of years, but it still did it. See? And see, and that's the thing about God. See, you know, we get mad with God if he don't answer our prayer in two seconds. <laughs> what is he? Uh, I just prayed. I couldn't be an answer yet. See? And the thing with Noah was, Noah said, look, I'm a servant of God. Amen. I'm God created me to do his will. So whatever my father wants me to do, that's what I'm going to do. No matter how long it takes. See? You know, I mean, think about this also. Noah could have been having patience too. Yep. Noah could have quit, you know, just like Jesus could have quit. Neither one of them quit. Why? Right. They were doing the Father's will. And we can't afford to quit either. Amen. We've got to do the Father's will no matter how tough or how hard it gets. See, understand something. When we are doing the Father's will... Don't worry about nothing. God got your back. Amen. See? He says, I've got your back. And anybody mistreats you and anybody does some harm to you, God says, don't you try to get even. I'll get even for you. Amen. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. So Noah's out about doing God's business. And man, they're laughing at him. They're calling him all kind of names. You know, they're saying, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But Noah was just smiling because he knew that he was in the will of God and there was nothing they could do to him. See? Nothing that they could do to him and stuff. So he's going on about his father's business. And so in verse 11, it says, the earth also was corrupt before God. Not just where Noah was. The whole earth was corrupt before the eyes of God. The whole earth. Think about that. The earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. See? Ain't that what we got going on right now? We got all kind of violence going on right now and ain't nobody saying nothing about it. See? Nobody's doing nothing about it. You got, you know, you know, you got the politicians promising they were going to do something about it, but one group of politicians are the reason for it. See? They're letting people do whatever they want. See? It's sad. You got two uh, uh, two uh, different uh, politicians, rather. You know, you got Democrats and you got uh, Republicans or whatever. And the thing about it is, the only reason I mention that is, you got one, the, the Democrats, they are as evil as anybody that you've ever seen. You know, they would have fit right in in Noah's day. Mm -hmm. Because these, they are some evil people. Then on the other hand, you got the Republicans, they're some of the biggest cowards that you've ever seen. They always talk about what they're going to do and don't do nothing, see? And the thing is that they're all liars, see? Because they, you, 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 uh, uh, you run for office so that you can make life better for the people that you represent. None of them hardly are doing that at all, right. see? It's, not, it's, not, it's about power and it's about money and stuff and authority that they have and all of this stuff. And, and so, you know, if people, people that don't have really know God and don't have a real relationship with the Lord Jesus and stuff, 
man, they're in trouble. They're in trouble because they don't have anybody looking out for their for their interests, hardly at all. Nobody looking out for their interests and stuff. And the one guy that's trying to look out people is they try to put him in jail or kill him and stuff. So the thing is, is that it was evil, and that's what we got going on now. Yep. Evil. See, they were probably doing a different kind of evil, but it was still evil back mm -hmm. in those days. And to God, evil is evil, and sin is sin, mm -hmm. and evil is sin and stuff. Right. See, and yet people find pleasure in doing it, you know, and and and, and doing it to other people and stuff. See. But once that evil slaps them upside the head two or three times or whatever, now they realize. But it's too late. It's too late, see? Because you made things so bad because of the mind, uh, 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 what do they call it? Mind control that you use, you know, through your, through media and all of this stuff, you know, and, and people are just going hawk wild and stuff. And it's too late to pull it back. Sodom and Gomorrah was that way. Yeah. You know, what Abraham pleaded their case. He got down to 10 people being saved in Sodom, in Sodom and there wasn't even 10. Mm -hmm. He said, God, if you'll spare it, if there are just 10 saved in there. See, you know, same principle could apply today. You know, I don't have any faith in, 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 in a lot of people being saved or being born again today. Because, you know, Ben, they don't like to say born again, though. They like that word Christian. Oh, we can Christian. You know, you got, you know, Christian homosexuals. You got Christian transgender. You got Christian drunks. You got Christian this and all this stuff. See, you know, anything that they wanted to be, they can make it that yeah. and put that name to it. Yeah. You cannot put that born again name to, well, I'm a born again drunk. Uh-uh. See, that is not allowed by God. Ooh. See? A, a person born again is going to be a person living in righteousness and true righteousness and holiness is what they're going to be doing Amen. and stuff. That's the way it, it ain't going to be, uh, you know, meeting with people at bars and go witness to them in a bar. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. I mean, really. You're going to go be having a drink with somebody and that's about the first time. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus love you, you know, I mean. Jesus don't mind me being a drunk, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I know Jesus going And you know that lie they tell people? He will accept you just as you are. Uh-uh. <laughs> he, he ain't accepting you as you are. Uh -uh. You know, he will, he will receive you as you are. And through that reception, you're going to have to repent, baby. Right. You're yeah. going to have to repent of your sin. Because Jesus is going to say you are a sinner. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen. See, even though Jesus isn't here on the, in the flesh, he's here in the spirit living through all of us that represent the kingdom of God. We speak his words. Repent and believe the gospel. That's what Jesus said. Yep. See, living as he living and walking as he walking, that's what we're going to be telling people. Amen. That's what we're going to be telling people. See, and, and as Noah continued on about his father's business, he did not allow himself to be intimidated by anything or anyone. See, what did Noah say? Well, you know, and I'm speaking for it. Noah said, I am here to do my father's business. See, and we're going to preserve God's creation through what he's called me to do. And so God said to Noah in verse 13, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them all with the earth. Mm. Added word, all is my word. And what I wrote down at the end of this little note in my Bible, I said, destroy all evil. See, mm -hmm. see, when Jesus comes back and we is taking everybody out or whatever and stuff, Ain't going to be no good left on the earth because he ain't here. See? It's true. He's not here. And so when Jesus is not, I mean, when Jesus is not present in a person's life, they have no hope. It's true. They have no hope whatsoever. And again, just to reiterate, you know, when Noah's doing God's business, 
God had him covered. He was totally protected. Mm -hmm. They could not take him out. You know, even over in, um, you know, they didn't want to hear the name of God in, in Noah's day. They didn't even want to hear the name of Jesus, you know, in the days of the apostles. Because in the 10th chapter of Acts, they told them, you know, stop speaking in that name. Yep. They didn't even, they could not even say the name of Jesus. They hated it so much. Stop speaking in that name. You know what the, what the John and them told them? Go pound sand. Or go break up a rock. You can do whatever you want, but we're going to speak in that name. Amen. See, we're going to speak in that name. You don't have much of that kind of boldness today. Mm -mm. When people are attacked because of their uh, of, of their faith in God, their faith in Christ, see, you know. But the thing is, is that notice I'm still about my father's business. But my point I wanted to make here, more so than anything, was the fact that God destroyed them because of their sin. He destroyed them because of their sin. Now, uh, if you go over to to Numbers, chapter, let's see, chapter 13, and we'll go, we'll, it's going to bleed over into chapter 14, um, and we're going to be dealing with the children of Israel, uh, but we're going to be dealing with the, you know, with the children of Israel in their fear of man, see, in their fear of man. You know, when we are serving God, we don't fear anything, see? And the thing is, is that people think that they can reject God and that's okay. They think they can reject him and that's okay, but it's not. It is not okay. You know, and this is dealing with when, the, when uh, Moses sent out the spies to spy out the land and stuff. And, and, uh, and when they came back, they got two different answers as to whether they could, because they were spying it out to see if they could take the land. And so they were going out to check it out to see what was going on over there. And so when they came back, uh, they even brought some, uh, uh, I think the Bible said a cluster of grapes or whatever. And, then, and, then, and it appeared that it was so big that they had to hang them on a stick and you had to have one guy on this side and one guy on that side. So it was a plentiful, a plentiful land. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. And they came into the brook of Eshcol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes and they buried between two upon a stack. Two people had to bring it about. See, so they hung it on the, on a staff and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and, and brought it back to camp along with, and they brought of uh, the pomegranates and of the figs. Now, when you move down to verse 27, it says, in verse 26, it says, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. See, so they gave him some evidence as to look, man, this is some this is some good land over here. Look at this fruit. And then they go on to say in verse 28, nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb steal the people. See, these guys were making excuses as to why they couldn't take the land. Mm -hmm. Caleb comes along and says, hey man, y'all, Slow your roll. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it. Mm -hmm. See, now you got two people, two different groups of people. You just had the two, uh, uh, Joshua and Caleb, and then you had like the other 
uh, 11 tribe members, I believe. And so it says that uh, Caleb said, we can take the land. You know, he was so, he had so much faith in God. He said, let's do it right now right. and stuff. And he said, uh, he said, for we are well able to overcome it. But when the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Now you're talking about somebody walking in the spirit of somebody that's not. Right. See, you got people went to see the same place, but came back with different answers and stuff. And really the answers that they gave were totally based on the faith that they had in God. Mm -hmm. Joshua or Caleb had faith in God, strong faith in God. Mm -hmm. He said, let's go immediately because we can take it. We can possess it and we can overcome it is what he said. And so then these other guys said, we be not able. Somebody lied. Right. <laughs> Somebody lied. We be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. Now, these people are going to hear these two different uh, descriptions of what they saw are these two kinds of faith. Or should I say faith and faithless, you know, and, and it's amazing to me, you know, what happened because I was sitting there when I was reading and just meditating on it and stuff. You got two people saying, we can't take it. You know, those, those and there's actually more than that all as total. And they said, we can't take it. Okay. Now, they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Now, look at all they had to say to convince the people. Caleb had one little paragraph that said, uh, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Mm -hmm. They didn't even find no excuses in there whatsoever why they couldn't do it. Not one excuse as to why they couldn't do it. But these guys had all kinds of excuses. Mm. They were so enamored about what they saw. Yep. See, about what they saw. Remember when David went up against Goliath? Mm -hmm. You know, David said, you know, he said, who is this clown coming up here after me? You know, he says, I come, you come to me with a, a sword and a spear. He said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Representing God and having all of God's power, you know, to back him up. See? And the thing about David, he ain't going to be saying that if he didn't know for a fact that he was going to able, be able to accomplish it. But what David had realized was nothing was too hard for God. That he could, uh, he could do all things, you know, that God had told him to do all uh, because of the fact that David had a heart after man. He was a man after God's own heart, see? So he knew his faith, you know, was in God, was so strong, and the faith was so strong because he, he knew God. He didn't just know of God. He knew God, spent time with God, and developed his faith in God because of what God told him and the relationship that he had developed with him. Amen. I can guarantee you David was having fellowship, you know, when he was out tending the sheep, mm -hmm. when he was out watching over the sheep and stuff, see? You know, and, and so the thing is, is that when you love somebody, you're going to think about them all the time, right. see? You're going to think about them all the time. You're going to think about their well-being. You're going to think about, you know, the, the goodness of that person, of those individuals and stuff, and the, and the kind people that they were. But now when it comes to God, I mean, you think about, you know, the person that God is and the promises that God has made to those of us who are here, see? 
God told us, you know, that you can do anything through me. You can do anything, you know, in the name of the Father. And it's like what, what David said. You come to me with sword and spear. You come to me with natural weapons. He says, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. It's done. Yeah. See, you know, when God is on your side and when you're trusting God and when you have faith in God, you know, you can take down a 15 foot giant with just a rock and a doggone slingshot. See, yeah. and, and that's what God was trying to show us. You know, God's power is so, uh, 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 is so major, you know, that nothing can defeat it. See, yeah. and whatever God says is, is. You know, and I can hear, you know, uh, 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 David having a conversation with God. He said, well, you know, that old boy, you know, he really think he's going to uh, uh, destroy, you know, your people. You know, he said, but, you know, but, but Father, I know we got him. We got him. See, we got him. And David couldn't sleep, you know, the night before. And it wasn't because he was scared. He was so excited to take him down. He wanted to see God get glory and honor for taking down, you know, the guy that if he just opened his mouth and breathed, you know, the, the, the army of Israel would just not going to shake in their sandals, I guess. I don't doubt they had boots back then, you know, <laughs> but they were shaking in the sandals and stuff, you know, but, but David was all fired up the night before because he knew that victory was his. Isn't that what faith is? Yeah. Faith is believing before you actually see the result. Right. But you know by faith in the spirit, because what does the Bible say? The warfare is in the spirit. When David prayed that time and, and it took him 21, took the age of 21 hours to get there, what he was doing, fighting with the devil, mm -hmm. or fighting with the devil's demons and stuff, getting that answer. See, so God is always going to operate in the spirit, but it'll manifest itself in the natural. Right. See, whatever you believe in God for and stuff. So David said, oh, Lord, we got him, Father. We got him. I know God said, calm down, son. Calm down. You, 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 we know. We Just take it to Go get you some rest. Oh, I don't need a rest. See, because David was not going. It wasn't a drip. It wasn't adrenaline. His faith not going to have him pointed like a arrow, you know, at, at Goliath, see, because there is no defeat in God, see. When you are representing God, you know, everything that God has promised is. What he says it is. True. His word will do what he said it will do and stuff. It all depends on whether we believe him or not, or we have faith to believe him or not. And so in chapter 14, and I'll just probably read the first, uh, maybe the first couple of verses. And so in verse one, it says, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. See, now think about this, that none of them went to spy out the land. None of them went to spy out the land. But yet, somebody told them that they couldn't do it, that they were gonna be defeated. And it's amazing to me, you know, how these people without ever seeing anything, believe these guys, you know, that brought back the evil report. You know why they believed them? Because they were just like them. Just like, yep. They were gutless. They were fearful of their enemy. They got all in, uh, enamored by the fact that they were giants and they made us look like ants, you know, and stuff. It's basically what they were saying. But what did Caleb say? He said, man, he said, let us go up at once yep. and possess it. See, you know, he didn't just say, well, you know, I know it's going to be hard or whatever. See, the thing about the Bible, what the Bible said, nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is too hard for God. See, God is your father. Jesus is your Lord. See, and Jesus said himself, I've been given power and authority above the earth, on the earth, beneath the earth. Nobody has more power than I've got right. because I got it from the Father, Amen. see? And the power that I have, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. He said that in Luke 17, 10, 17. That's what he said. Or Luke 10, 19, I'm sorry. That's what he said, see? 
And so the thing is, is that the one thing that you would notice about the people that I've talked about and that are believing and who are trusting God, it ain't but a few of them. Just a few. Noah was the only one, yeah. you know, in his day. In the day right now, in this particular situation, there was only two, Joshua and Caleb, that believed God. See? That's why when we read in chapter 7 of Matthew, it talks about the broad way and many there be which go in direct. But those that who are righteous and straight as the gate and not the, the ones that are, uh, are walking straight in the gate and narrow is the way, there was only a few. That's what Jesus said. Righteousness, holiness, truth, those who believe in that and those who live like that to honor and to glorify God and to do those things that please God, to honor God, to lift up his name, to demonstrate his power and his authority, going to be few. There's few. That's why I don't believe all these thousands of people and hundreds of people that are attending these churches or whatever, most of them probably hanging out in the, in the broad way. And you got these few two or three people in the church that are saying, no, man, look, we can't do that, but we need to trust God. We need to have faith in God. We need to do this and that. And, you know, and, and, and trust God and let God lease all that. And they'll go, go sit down somewhere, man. Nobody want to hear what you got to say. See? They don't want to hear that. These people did not want to hear what Caleb said. They just literally just totally ignored what he said and the reason they reacted so quickly to these other guys because just like in these churches today, they told them what they wanted to hear. Yep. They told them what they wanted to hear and stuff. We can't take them. We don't, oh no, uh uh uh, we, we gonna die or whatever. So, see, Caleb said, Look, I seen the same people y'all seen. He said, But, you know, we ain't gonna die because if God be for us, who can be against yes, us? That's right. See? He says, so we're not worried about how big they are, how tall they are. And that's why, and you know, and, and, and really, when you listen to people today, you know, and you start talking to them about being an overcomer, you know, and being victorious and, and walking in, in the power and the authority of God, you know, and, and, and laying hands on the sick and casting out devils and all of this stuff, they look at you like you lost your mind. See, even though all of it is biblical, yep. all of it is biblical and they think you crazy and stuff. Because you believe the word of God. See, you know, and a lot of these people are caught up in these places like that. And they don't have any hope in Hades. See, because they've already given up. Well, you know, it ain't going to get no better. You know, and I mean, I've been going here for a long time. Man, I am not going to be dying and drying up in any place when I know that I need the water of God's word. Right. I need the spirit of God's word. See. You know, I need the food of God's word, the true gospel. I don't need some doggone uh, a hawk slop or whatever and stuff. You know, if anything, if you're being fed hawk slop, you ought to come to your senses like the prodigal son did when he was sitting out there slopping with the pigs. Because that's what a lot of y'all are doing right now. You're slopping with the pigs and stuff. You know, I mean, a lot of you probably got your oin on too and stuff. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, I, I don't really... It just kind of blows my mind. Now, the uh, the uh, the thing about it, you know, just to, to, to reiterate, is that why is it that people are more prone in church to believe an evil report than to have faith and believe, you know, what does say the Lord? I mean, why is that? See, it, it's all about the relationship. It's all about the love that you have, should have for God and stuff. It's all about that and stuff. But for most of you, it ain't about that at all. You want to hear the bad report. It's just like in, in, uh, in Isaiah 30, you know, in verse 10, where it talks about speak uh, uh, lies to us, deceit to us. Don't even tell us what God says. And we don't want to hear nothing about what God says. And that's why the church is today. The church is today as it was in the days of Noah. You know, the church has got all of this kind of stuff going up in there, but they ain't really saying nothing of real substance when it comes to Jesus or when it comes to the word of God. They're so bent on doing what they want to do. And when you do what you want to do, you end up 
like those people in the sixth chapter of Genesis. God wiped them all out. Yep. He took them all out. In the days of, uh, of Lot, when, when the homosexuals, you know, were just literally, you know, taking over everything, you know, even around them, God says, okay, I'm taking all of that out, see? So God took all that stuff out. And if you read in the Bible, as I've said many times, then you're going to see how God reminded you in Jude is one place. And I think it's even in, um, let's see what's up in Lamentations, I think it's even in there. It's, it's about six different places that God wanted to remind people what happened to people who rebel against him, who are, who pervert his gospel, you know, and pervert, you know, his creation and stuff as well. See, you know, he's going to take you out with no question. He's going to take you out. Now, I was going to go over and, uh, and, uh, and look at uh, the children of Israel also in the uh, third chapter of Hebrews. Um, and uh, let's just run over there real quick. Man, you know it's after 12 o'clock. Man, it was after 12 o'clock a long time ago. So, <laughs> and see, that's amazing to me, man. You know, when I was going to church and growing up in faith and, 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 and learning about God and stuff, man, I could, I didn't care how long church would last because, you know, even if church lasts at 12 o'clock, we're going to be standing out in the parking lot for three or four hours talking about, you know, you know, what God spoke to us and what God said to us and stuff. And man, I tell you, that was some good word, you know, because, and when we say good word, it means that what we heard, you know, God ministered something to us or envisioned something to us or allowed us, you know, to understand something that maybe at some point during the week, you know, that we didn't fully understand it and stuff, see? And, and you know, when God reveals himself to you through his word, you know, and by his spirit and stuff, you know, and if you love him, it ain't nothing to stand out in the parking lot and talk for three or four hours, you know, about in the church parking lot, see? And we'd be out there forever. I mean, and everybody would be happy and everybody would be just so blessed, you know, and, and really all we talked about was what happened in church, what was preached and stuff. You know, people don't talk and do that anymore. You know, that was something that I missed when I was, when I lived in Florida, you know, was the, the fellowship after church, the fellowship with other brothers and sisters on the weekends, you know, to where it was all about lifting up the Lord in fellowship with one another. You know, kind of reminded me of what we read over in the fourth chapter of Acts, you know, on the day or after the day of Pentecost, after those people, after Peter preached and those people got saved, and then they started ministering to one another's needs, and they were also fellowshipping, and the Bible talked about them coming together and breaking bread, and the majority of these people, they didn't even know each other. See, that's the thing about the Spirit of God, when God saves an individual you know, no matter where they live or who they are, they come into contact, you know, into personal contact with another brother or sister that is truly born of the spirit of God and walking in the things of God. They're not going to be strangers to one another. Right. They're not going to be strange. They're going to start talking because the, the most important thing in their lives that they have in common is a relationship with Jesus. They both have that in common. And as a result, you know, the conversation really turns to what God has really been doing in my life, what God is doing in our church, you know, if they tell the truth, uh, you know, and stuff like that, you know, you lifting up the name of the Lord and stuff, you know, and I really have longed for that for like over 40 years and I've not seen it happen yet to where the body of Christ becomes one with one another because they allow it to be divided by race, by culture, about ethnicity and, and all this stupid stuff, you know? And, uh, but we don't see that happening in the Bible because there were people uh, uh, in the, in, even in Jesus' day, you know, where you had Jews that would fellowship with Samaritans, even though the Jews and Samaritans, the Jews hated the Samaritans and stuff. They didn't have a relationship. But when Jesus came in and when Jesus ministered to that woman at the well, you know, and bridged the gap, he didn't mention nothing about how Jews felt about this woman. His, his purpose for coming there was to reveal to her 
you know, how her life could be changed by knowing him, you know, and following, excuse me, and following him in that, at that particular time because he had not gone yet to be with the father and stuff. But the gap was bridged. There were Jews, you know, with Samaritans and stuff, all because of Jesus and stuff. And their race and their differences didn't even matter whatsoever. Because what really should happen in the life of a person uh, who, who truly is born again, what should happen in that person's life is a major change to where they no longer live as they used to live. They have turned completely from serving Satan to serving God. And if, 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 if Ken says he's serving God, if I say I'm serving God, then Ken and I shouldn't have any, any differences especially when it comes to the things of God whatsoever. Right. But a lot of people do. A lot of people do. They do what the people of, uh, what these people did. Okay, let me just read this real quick. It'll take a couple more minutes. Uh, let's see. Okay, in chapter four it says, uh, let us therefore fear, lest they promise being left us entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. And that was the whole problem, you know, with the children of Israel in the wilderness. You know, they heard the gospel preached. Um, and they heard the commands from God in regard to who they were, uh, and to who, what he, in, in, in regard to who he was, rather. And the thing about it is, they didn't believe it. You know, the, uh, Paul said that they didn't have it mixed with faith. Because what does the Bible say about, about faith? The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So it is important, you know, that we walk in faith in order that God may hear us, you know, and not only that, that we may hear him and obey him. And that is not what happened to the children of Israel, you know, simply because the children of Israel was all about their own business. It's what they were. They were about their own business. And so in verse three it says, for we which have believed do enter into his rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remained that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief unbelief again he limited a certain day saying in david today after so long a time as it is said today if you will hear his voice harden not your hearts for if jesus had given them rest then would he not afterward have spoken of another day there remains therefore a rest to the people of god for he that is entered into his rest he also had ceased from his own works as god did from his let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And when they talk about entering into the rest, they, they're talking about literally entering into a, a relationship with God and finding you a seat and just sitting down and staying there, see? And staying there and putting all your faith and all your trust in God. You know, they didn't have that kind of faith. They didn't have that kind of belief. And so, but Paul did say in verse 9, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. See, for he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did his. See, and so let us labor therefore to enter into the rest, into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. 
Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. That's the scripture you all hear me confessing a lot of times because you know, it's important to know that whatever your circumstances are or whatever your trials are, or whatever your tribulations are, or the attacks and the hate and all that, whatever they are, the Bible says Jesus has already experienced that and he overcame it, you know, and he overcame all of it uh, without sin, without sin. Let me just read it again. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace um, to help in time of need. Now, these folks could not enter in and, and you could probably read chapter uh, five also. It says, but these folks, they could not enter in. Why? Because of their unbelief. They couldn't enter in because of their unbelief. And, um, and the thing is, is that in verse, uh, let's see. In verse chapter three, I meant to read it first. In, in verse uh, 11, and we will close it. In verse 11, so I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another or lift up one another while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. You know, like the scripture says, he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. And endurance, because you're going to be attacked if you're walking with the Lord and being walking in obedience to God, you're going to be attacked by people. Right. You're going to be attacked by people. But Jesus said, be confident and be steadfast until the end. See, and, and, and what, what I'm saying to you is if you have the same faith, you know, that Noah demonstrated, that uh, Abraham demonstrated in how they uh, uh, trusted God and had faith in God and that uh, Caleb demonstrated and stuff by believing that God could do whatever it was that, that needed to be done for them. Uh, and, it's, and in that case, you know, it was to uh, take over the land that they went out to spy. Verse 14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast until the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with some was, but with whom, but with whom was he grieved 40 years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the, in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in, they could not enter in because of unbelief. They couldn't enter in because of unbelief. All of these situations that we talked about, Noah, uh, uh, Lot, uh, even with uh, Joshua, Caleb in that particular situation, those people that rejected, you know, uh, 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 God, you know, through those representatives that God had sent and stuff or God was using, all of those people were unbelievers. They did not believe God. See, when they were told what God would do and could do, they didn't want to hear that. You know, the Bible talks a great deal about the children of Israel in the wilderness that they murmured and complained all the time. 
you know, and God just got fed up with it and stuff. He said, no, you're not going in. He says, only those that are 20 years old and, uh, and uh, uh, younger are the only ones that are going to see the promised land and stuff. He said, but you all, you're not going to see it. Why? Because of your rebellion, because of your unbelief, see? And so everything that you heard me sharing with you today, you know, as I was speaking, God was speaking to you about your relationship with him and your trust in him and you having faith in him and stuff. And, you know, and, and helping you to understand that if you're walking in unbelief, you don't expect to receive anything from God. You cannot get a blessing from God. You cannot enter a place in your relationship with God all because you chose not to believe him or not to honor him, you know, because of having a relationship with him. And you couldn't honor him because there was no relationship, you know. But these brothers had a relationship. Noah had a relationship. Caleb and Joshua, they had a relationship. They believed God, see. And when I say relationship, I'm not talking about in terms of a, 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 the way you would have a flesh relationship. Their relationship was blood-bought, see. They had a relationship. I rather our relationship was blood bought, see, and and that blood was the blood of Jesus that was shed, you know, for all of our sin, and that if we are faithful and obedient to seek Him, to trust Him, and to serve Him and stuff, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen.